Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Airships Conquer the Skies, and thank you for watching. Airships is a strategy action game, guys, that has you building flying death machines, or bases sometimes, and conquering the world. Sounds interesting, right? Well, it released on Steam Early Access February 2015, which of course means the game is still in active development, guys, and everything you see is subject to change and not a final representation of the game. Airships Conquer the Skies was developed and published by David Stark, and I kind of wonder how many Stark jokes or Iron Man jokes that guy gets in one day. Um, you can go ahead and get airships on Steam for $9.99, guys. Now, if FTL or uh, Besieged or you know any other game that has you like, kind of creating things has kind of proved, it's that we enjoy building things, guys. We enjoy seeing our creation, and then we enjoy seeing that creation blow up. <laughs> and that is kind of the, the joy that I found in airships. I was screwing around with the editor, and then I, two hours had passed by, and I'm just watching things explode on the screen. It was very pleasurable experience now there's a couple things to note about airships it's not the world's most prettiest game it's gonna have those pixel graphics that's why i mentioned like ftl or besieger just it's not the most prettiest game um uh, matter of fact everything's kind of boxy but you know what it's a satisfying game when you see something that you built getting blown to smithereens or blowing something else to smithereens it's kind of really entertaining also the game is really kind of complicated at first first but once you start figuring out the fine you know tune of things you start messing around with the options you start learning what all the pieces do it becomes a hell of a lot easier and kind of quick to make a ship actually so we're going to go ahead and start off in the options of course um there isn't really too much to the options right now. there's some sound sliders there's no controller support for this game but to be honest with you it's not that type of game uh there's some resolution control right here uh, going all the way up to 1080p there's really not much in between it's kind of weird um, and right now, 1080p resolution, everything's like really far away. Everything's very, very tiny. You kind of have to like squint to read it. So it, I would suggest to you, if you're going to play this game, probably play it with like a lower resolution. Uh, it'll probably look a little bit better for you. But for the purposes of this video and, you know, YouTube's video quality maintaining, it's going to be a 1080p for this video. You also have it in German. You can play it in German. You can send it back reports. You can turn off the high quality graphics. It's just like a little flip of the switch. I'm not really sure what this affects because I've never really turned it off. And you got some lighting effects there, guys. The game does feature Steam achievements. It doesn't have Steam cards yet. That might be coming in the future. Um, so, you know, if people who are looking for that kind of thing will enjoy it. It does also feature multiplayer, LAN, uh, and online multiplayer. Now, I'm not going to be able to show off the online multiplayer uh, because, well, there's really no one playing right now. At least I don't think there is. Let's see. Nope, sure isn't. So... That is one thing I won't be able to show you off, but basically there's a campaign mode in this game. We're going to just jump right into it. You can kind of also, I forgot to mention this, design your crest. Now the crest actually has kind of an importance of relevance because each symbol on the crest does something for your particular faction. Because this is kind of, you're kind of conquering the world. They want you to, it's a little bit of a, a, a an RTS type of game. So you can basically create your own kind of crest right here. This is the one I created, but you can change it up to whatever you like. You'd be like, okay, I want that one, or let's go with random, let's go with this one. You can see there's all sorts of different kinds of crests here. You can create all of them are pretty cool looking. I'd say, of course, you have those adorable pixel graphics. But what's important here is what is on the right. So, for instance, uh, that's the guillotine and that's the rat. So, the guillotine, revolting cities join your empire automatically. Uh, as you can see, there's also certain symbols that don't actually have a benefit quite yet. Um, I'm not sure if they will eventually. I'm not really sure. It would seem silly to kind of take one of these symbols if it didn't add anything to your, your army, which is kind of a little bit of a weird thing. I'd like this to maybe be disjointed from the symbols and let me just create a banner that I like and then just pick a bonus per, you know, thing on the flag or pick two bonuses as it were. But you can see that one basically lets me uh, conquer revolting cities, join your empire. The rat injured crew members move at full speed. So these have an effect on aspects of the game, you know, from either combat or, you know, the conquering of cities or de from your city's defenses as well. You can basically have bonuses that are more meant for defense than attacking, for instance. Like, uh, let's say all cannons are twice as accurate, ships ready for commands are twice as fast. 25% income from cities, which is pretty freaking sweet. Can build a grand prow? I have no idea what the hell that is. Stonewall defense... 
which is 50%, and you get the basic idea. It just gives you bonuses, guys. Uh, so we're just going to get random. We're going to go doodly doo, doodly doo. I don't understand why you would want to pick anything that doesn't have two symbols on it. That'd be seem kind of silly. You'd want to pick something that has like two, you know, two, uh, two symbols on it, I would imagine. I'm going to pick that. We're going to pick the scales, and then we'll pick, uh, oh, let's see here. We'll pick the scales, and we'll go with the mountain. Okay. And then basically we'll register that, and that'll be our symbol. You can also register it on their forums. Kind of neat stuff here. Now we're going to go ahead and open up the editors. Now these are the really important things, basically. The editor and the town editor. The reason for that is, is that's where you create ships. Now, there is a lot of different choices here on the left that you can actually choose from. And I'm not going to get into all this because it's rather complicated, and it does take a little while to learn. But I'd rather just explain to you what each room does by simply just kind of showing you a pre-built ship. So we'll show off uh, the Belial. All right, so this is the Belial. This was all constructed from all these tools left here on the right. You can also add to pre-constructed -pre uh, pre -constructed ships, I should say, if you so choose to. You can add some flair to them and change things up. So basically the things that every ship needs to fly is propulsion, which is what these propeller rooms here on the back left are, and these little suspendium chambers, which is basically the game's mystical... Uh, you know, element that lets ships float in the sky. It's anti-gravity, essentially. You need those, basically. You also need to create quarters for all your characters, kind of your crew, to get around. You also need crew quarters. You need cannons, obviously. You also need a supply chamber, basically, where supplies will be brought into the ship. Every ship needs that. Also needs coal and a weapon storage place, which can be very dangerous if it were to blow up. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a really simplistic... Uh, ship building tool once you actually get into it and you start learning it it's not that hard it's just a little bit complicated at first i've actually already created i created the martyr and i actually didn't create this as good as i can i was just aiming to make a small ship nothing too large it actually has bombing capabilities and has two little gatling guns on the, on the front here he was just looking to make a little fighter essentially yeah you can basically make whatever kind of ship you want here we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and make a ship really quick why not let's, let's just do this really quick it shouldn't be too hard We'll create, uh, we'll need, we'll need quarters. Let's make some quarters. You can also zoom in really close, getting a lot of detail. Uh, we need a bridge. Okay, we need, um, some lift. So we'll get us a small suspendium thingy. There we go. I'm uh, probably gonna need a corridor to connect these two. There we go. Uh, we need some sort of propulsion. Let's go with a small propeller. Small propeller, it works. Where is it at? It's right there. Again, it's just all really simplistic stuff. We also need some uh, a supply hatch. Because again, I'm making a small ship. I don't really need as much. You can also, under the basic tab right here, get a basic idea of everything you need. You can also add armor to your ships. You can paint your ships. You can also decorate your ships with your banner. It's a lot of customization here uh, for you to play around with. It's just really freaking sweet. Okay, the ship has no coal. We need coal. So that'll be under resources. There we go. Small coal. I'll put that right there. Cool. Cannot give the ship's command. You can get the ship's command. What are you talking about? I think we need to connect the ships with corridors here. Uh, what needs to be connected? I don't understand. Uh, that. Ah, there we go. Cool. And now the ship's basically ready for flight. We can also add weapons to it, of course. Again, that was just a really quick example of how to make a ship. Now you can see right here, all the uh, the things that are needed for this ship to fly are already added. It will fly. It has a pretty good uh, height balance, a weight. It basically shows you all sorts of information there for you to enjoy. Uh, let's go ahead and go to weapons. And we're going to make this like a flaming ship. We'll just say, okay... This one has two flamethrowers. As you can see, there's a whole host of different kinds of weapons here for you to uh, mess around with. I'm looking for the flamethrower, though. Ah, flamethrowers. There we go. It's just modules. No, okay, so we got we got um, add we got to add ammunition, and we got to add corridors to these particular sections here. Will that work? Will that work? Did that work? Okay, come on, come on now. Again, I'm not exactly the greatest person in the world to be making uh, this. Okay, we should be able to access it. I don't understand what the problem is. Okay, hold on. Let's just... There! Does that work? No? You gonna be a penis about it? Okay, hold on. Let's go like this. 
Will that one take care of it? Which one's causing the problems here, game? Give me a clue here. Uh, oh, you know what it probably is? I probably need to add... Put this down one, and then we probably can add a corridor here. And that should work. Why wouldn't it work like that? Uh, the ship has no ammunition. Let's add ammunition first, and then we'll see if we can figure it out. Like I said, it does take a little bit of finagling. It takes a little bit of learning. But once you learn it, it's not actually that difficult. Why can I not get the commands to the ship here? That's so weird. I don't understand what's wrong with it. But you get the basic idea. <laughs> it takes a little bit of finagling. Of figuring things out. This was back here. The ship's modules are not mutually accessible. Well, either way, you get the basic idea. That's how you construct ships. You can also construct uh, buildings this way, kind of defensive structures that, again, are all used. You'll see what that is later. Um, to kind of defend your territories. Now, let's actually go ahead and get into the main kind of bulk of the game. This is where you're going to be kind of playing the game mostly. Uh, which is that kind of that main campaign mode where you're trying to conquer the world. As you can see here, I created a very large map. There is our little city right there. Now, there's a lot of options here. First and foremost, this is live. So when, you, when I press the spacebar, you can see there's a little timer up there. I can either go, you know, a normal speed, super fast, or ridiculously fast. And as time is passing, I'm generating cash. Uh, which I can do with several things. First and foremost, I can kind of either click on the enemy city and send a spy to their city, which will give me information about their city. Or I can click on my own city and start building airships or defenses. That's what basically, you know, adding buildings here to your um, to your capital, basically, just to defend it in case you have no airships there. Those buildings will be able to defend it from an airship attack. Hopefully, that is. You can, of course, also build airships. Now, here's the thing about the airships conquer the skies. There's really no point in constructing buildings currently. I think that's something that needs to be fixed. It's more easier to just construct a shit ton of airships and then just send them flying around. Because buildings are just airships that can't move. Um, so it, it's just, right, as at this point right now, in this current point in development, it's just easier to create a bunch of airships. Which we'll go ahead and do. We'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and, go ahead and, and actually, I mean, create an airship. I'm going to build an airship. Uh, now there's a bunch of predetermined airships in the game right here, so we're just going to go ahead and make a Bubo. We'll unpause. As you can see, it's going to start constructing the HMS Bubo there. Already being constructed. That's going to be added to my fleet. I can click on the airship here, thing on the left here. This little, uh, little representation, this little icon here is representation of your airships. And then I can either, you know, attack an enemy fleet. I can move them around. I can move them to an allied city. You get the basic idea. Because we're not really in any kind of position to do that quite yet. I'm just going to build a bunch of ships first, and then we'll show off some combat, which will be really friggin' sweet. Okay, we got about. Four ships there. We'll build a martyr. Why not? I like the martyr because it's a it's a bombing vessel. Okay, so we got a bunch of ships here now. We got about four. We're going to go ahead and attack this guy. I'm not really trying to win because I would obviously want to have some defenses left over at my base uh, for me to you know not die a horrible death. Now each battlefield's kind of randomly generated sometimes, so you'll have things like floating islands. As you can see right here, like this floating island has a bunch of the suspendium or whatever it's called on it. So this island will actually be kind of a nuisance in your way. You need to be kind of piloting your ships. You can also move them around at the start of combat. You're like, okay, I don't want them that one there. You know, by the way, each ship also has a flight cap. It can't go above this particular point, depending on what kind of ship it is. Uh, each of them are very always very different, their flight caps. So there we go. We want to kind of like poise like that. We can flee, we can reserve, we can say, oh, we don't want this one. We we'll put it away. We're going to use them all. Okay, now when combat starts, basically you have several actions that you can do. You kind of com send commands to your airship. They're going to kind of always be doing their own thing on the inside of these airships. They're going to be manning the guns. They're going to be doing it themselves. You don't have to tell them to fire. You just have to tell them what to fire at occasionally. And even then, see how there's only one enemy ship out here? You don't even really have to do that. So, in this particular case, I'm going to tell this guy, move this way. I'm going to tell this guy, move this way and then this guy I'm gonna tell him start jamming well, he's not gonna do much this guy and then they'll start following your commands oh that was very stupid of him why would he move into firing position okay well he's retreating that's what he's doing he's playing it smart he's like I'm getting the hell out of here so as you can see when that green arrow is above them you know you can give them a new command 
I'm gonna see if I can kind of corner this guy uh, really quickly. Now you could be, you gotta be careful. You can actually have your ships ram into each other. Whole mess of bad things could happen. How high can you get, Martyr? You can't get my crappy ship can't fly that high. It's sad. All right, well he's kind of outmaneuvering me right now, which is not good. You can also flip your ships around as the need arises. Uh, so we'll move him like this, and we'll put F. And we're gonna start flying after that bastardo, and then turn this ship around. You can also have enemy ships. You can have you know ships ram each other if you so choose. Um, simply by hitting obviously the ram button, for instance, like so. In this case, we won because he ran out of ammo. Uh, we were running out of ammo too, as you can imagine. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you don't see as much action as you would like. Uh, but it looks like we did conquer. We can either do a brutal takeover, the city's rapidly brought under your control, or a gentle takeover. Slow and gentle transfer of power that leaves the city mostly intact. We're just going to pillage. Pillage that city. I guess we're going into combat again. Alright, you know what? You just ram him. You. Oh, okay, you're just the whoop. Whoops. That would have been bad. Okay, come on. You can do this. You guys just hang out down there. Uh, I guess fire that way and you just do what you can, man. Man, he's way above us. Good God. The flight cap of this thing is way high. It does not seem fair that he has such a high flight cap there. We can also zoom in quite zoom in quite out quite a bit or zoom in. Which is also very sweet. Alright, now we got him pinned. Alright, let's just Ugh, now we got him pinned! There we go, he's in trouble now. Oh god! What just happened? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! What was that? <laughs> so we pillaged the city as you can see here. We're pillaging it as we speak. And we're going to move back to our city. I don't really have any interest in this. This territory can go to hell for all I care. But you get the basic idea. That's how combat works. You can conquer cities. You're always having to play like this, this strategy to it. Like I said, you can also send spies to city. Like I can send one to Catbridge here. And now he's infiltrating the city. And basically it says, uh, 49 income, tiny shipyard, suspendium cannon. Basically different cities have different bonuses that allow you to build different kinds of ships. So if you don't have like a city that has like the flamethrower part, you're not going to be able to build a ship that shoots flames, for instance. So you also have like a little bit of resource management in, in there at the same time. Uh, and you can also hit this button up here. It gives you empire details. You can raise taxes and piss off people in your city. In case, you know, you're in trouble, you can also save, of course, and open up a new game. All that good kind of stuff here, guys. So we're going to go ahead and go quit. Because I want to show you my favorite thing in this game. My favorite thing in this game is this combat mode in this game. Yes, the main campaign mode is all full of strategy and fun and goodness. But for me, the combat mode is the most entertaining thing here. And I'll tell you why. Because it allows you to add whatever you want for absolutely free. Which is freaking awesome because I've built some pretty massive ships. This is my one of the ships I built that's called the Monster. As you can see, it just has these huge guns on the front. Guns on the top. So many weapons. So much ammo. And it's just a beefy, beefy ship. I'm going to just show you. Because it just it's so entertaining just to watch it, your ships basically kind of go into combat. It's like, you know. So we're going to add a boobo there. And we'll just let them fight it out. Now that Bubo's smart. He got the hell out of there. He got out of dodge. Where'd he go? Come back here, you coward. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you can actually, if you so choose... Hold on, I'm going to ram him, if I can. Boom! Uh, you can also... 
board enemy ships here. You can see these little options right here. One of these is board enemy ship. And you can actually conquer the enemy ship. You can actually take it from them. Um, without even actually destroying the ship. So as you can see, my men are going to start jumping on board. Now they're killing the crew. It's really hard to see the action. <laughs> wow. Well, they're all dead. Well, that's how that rolls sometimes. <laughs> the combat mode is my favorite thing because it just allows you to build really stupid, absurd battles and just let them smash together. Kind of like, you know, taking Legos and just smashing them together. I enjoy that aspect. I really enjoy the combat. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it randomly keeps generating a board uh, and sometimes it doesn't let you place certain things the way you want it to. I wish there was a way to kind of choose a particular kind of board to fight on, like a flat terrain, and just have like a city battle. Like Because I actually did build a massive sprawling city, as you can imagine. I call it Cannon City. And it is freaking ginormous. Which actually, this might be a good board to try it out on. We'll try it. We'll have the monster versus Cannon City, and then we'll just let them go at it for a while. Yeah, it looks like it's going to work. Now, as you can see, Cannon City is just loaded to the, the brim with cannons, flak cannons, and all sorts of crazy stuff like a supercomputer that lets me aim. I'm going to tell them to focus on aiming here. Uh, but it also has one giant weakness, which is right here, which is the, all the uh, ammo it has. If this were to be hit right here, this would detonate the city. And this is what I just I like about the game, just having these stupid giant fights, letting these airships go at it, or these cities versus airships. And just playing around with the construction mode. Yes, it is a little complicated at first, but once you get the, the idea of it, once you figure it out, it's not that hard to build stuff in this game, guys. It, it's really, you just, there's a lot of choices. You have a lot of variations, a lot of customization here. Like I said, it's not the world's most prettiest game, but it's really freaking awesome to really just see your creations and all the different kinds of creations for that matter. I would hope this game gets some Steam Workshop support, because I think it'd be really, need to see the kinds of different ships that people are making. That's on fire! Put out the fire, men! Do you not understand what that means? Fire? If that were to detonate, the city is going to go up. Oh my god, the city may go up. No! Not Cannon City! Oh my god! It's raging out of control. Oh! Whew! It didn't detonate anything else, but it did blow up quite a bit. It didn't jack our city up quite a bit, but we're not necessarily dead there. Uh, cities have the same kinds of options. By the way, you can tell them to kind of focus on shooting. You can tell them to focus on fires. You can tell them to focus on repairing. You can also tell them what kind of aiming you want them to do. Rapid fire, normal fire. You get the basic idea. Let's see how the enemy ship's doing. It's not doing really any better, as you can see here. And now they're in the range of my flak cannons. So they're not in more trouble. Uh, you can just, like I said, it, it's not the prettiest game, but you can definitely zoom in. Good God. And get a lot of detail of what's going on. Good God, that just blew up massively. The music's pretty intense. It really does get your heart pounding. The sound effects really give that oomph to when things hit. I enjoy that aspect to it. I can't wait to see this game develop a little bit more. Give a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more strategy aspects to the campaign mode. Hopefully let me pick a board in combat mode. That would make me really happy. And definitely, definitely needs that Steam Workshop support. Just so we can share creations of cities or airships. I think that would be really, really neat. But yeah, with that multiplayer support, that ability to kind of create your own airships and things with your own imagination, guys. It has a really cool lot of potential for some really good you know, strategy action here, guys. Uh, and that's basically everything I had to say about Airships Conquer the Skies, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to say big thanks to the developer for a chance to check out this title. Thank you for watching. We're going to subscribe and share, and I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up that tip jar if you're feeling generous of heart. All tips go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Till next time, guys, play more indie games.